Hello, Sigma. As a physics or uh, engineering student, friction makes our life hell, as you might know. But actually, friction is very much required for life because life without friction would be really boring. You will not be able to walk. You will not be able to drive your car. You, in fact, will not be able to do anything but move, right? So. What exactly is friction? Friction is nothing but a force which opposes relative motion. Between two bodies. Now, what do I mean by, uh, by this? Let us understand this with an example. Let's say we have a book on a table, right? This is a table. And we have a book on cap on this table. This is a book, right? And now, if you just apply a Try to push this book with your fingers, which means apply some force on this book. Then let's say you start with a very small force. That means you push the book with a very small amount, right? With a very small force. Then you know that the book will not move in real life. But actually, according to Newton's law of uh, motion the book should move so because we are applying a force on a book let's say it has a mass m so in the absence of friction there will be a acceleration of this book which would be equal to f by m but in real life we know that if you apply a very small force on a body it does not move why because friction right so if the friction has to oppose or let's say friction has to cap this keep this body at rest then it has to apply a force in the opposite direction in this direction right i'm denoting friction with small f and in fact the force of friction has to be equal to the force i am applying on the book because otherwise the book will move, right? If there are unbalanced forces, only when the two forces will cancel each other, that is the net force on the body zero, will the body not accelerate, right? It will stay at rest. Now, as I told you in my previous video, friction is a phenomenological force, right? So this is a phenomenological force. Right, and what was the cause of this friction? Electromagnetic interaction. So actually, friction arises because this table at the macroscopic level, that is, if you look at it from far away, it might look pretty smooth. But actually, if you zoom in with a very powerful microscope, then you will know that there are bumps on this table, right? And these bumps, now table is made up of uh, what atoms and atoms are made up of electrons so these bumps the atoms of these bumps will try to repel now similar to this there will also be like this the surface of the book would also be non-uniform due to which there will be a force of uh, friction due to the electrons of these atoms from the two bodies repelling each other so the root cause of friction is actually electromagnetic forces, right? Now this force that is required to start the motion, now see, if you keep uh, increasing this force F, right, it is not that the book will never move. There will be a point when this friction will not be able to balance this force and the book will actually start moving. So this maximum limit, right, the maximum force which you will have to put on a book before it starts moving is known as static friction. Right. So next we have the static friction. Uh, 
Right. So, so what is static friction? Static friction is nothing but the maximum force that you will have to apply on the book before it begins to move. Right. So static friction is a friction which opposes the motion that would occur. Occur in its absence, right? Which means that if the this force of friction did not exist, then the body would move. So, in the absence, uh, static friction opposes that motion which would occur in its absence, right? If that is the motion which would occur if it was not there. Now, it's not that once the body starts moving, there is no force of friction uh, on that body, right? Uh, there will always be a force of friction and the type, the friction which acts on moving bodies is the kinetic friction. So, kinetic friction is always opposite or opposes the relative motion. Right. And this is what our definition was. Friction is a force which opposes the relative motion between two bodies. Whether it is at rest or it is moving, the friction is going to oppose the relative motion. Which means if you are in the frame of reference of this floor, then the book kept on the floor will, if you push it with a force F, it will try to move in this direction, right? But the due to friction, it does not move. Friction doesn't allow it to move in that direction. And similarly, the force of uh, kinetic friction. If this body is moving with a speed V, let's say, then friction would act in the opposite direction. Uh, such that it will try to oppose that motion. So it is very important to keep this in mind, the relative motion. Friction always opposes the relative motion, which means you will have to keep yourself in a particular frame and get the direction uh, of friction into the main content, which is the mat. So how do you find friction in a uh, and a body, how do you find the force of friction between two bodies? Now, you should know that friction, experimentally, friction is found to be proportional to normal reaction. Actually, if a body is in contact with another body, right, if this is the book, one body, which is uh, in contact with another body, the table, right, then the force is actually directed in this direction in general. And the components of this force, this is the contact force between the book and the fluid, right? And the components of this contact force is in the perpendicular direction, it is known as the normal reaction. And there is one component in the, so this is the force applied by the floor on the book, right? So its component in perpendicular to the body is known as the normal reaction, whereas its component parallel to the floor would be the friction, right? And the friction is found to be proportional to the normal reaction experimentally. And if you remove the proportionality symbol, then you just get a constant of proportionality, which is known as the coefficient of friction. Now, the coefficient of friction obviously is different for different materials and in fact, it is different for kinetic and static friction, right? So, there is a coefficient of kinetic friction, whereas there is a coefficient of static friction and both very different, like both are different from each other only very slightly. They are almost they have almost the same value, they differ only by a very little amount. 
but uh, the coefficient of friction as a whole varies for different materials right and you might think what is the most smoothest material can you guess it uh, you might have not been able to because uh, it's teflon you might think it's uh, oil or uh, grease but actually it's teflon and its coefficient of friction of teflon nu is equal to 0.04 so you can imagine how slippery a teflon material is so this this was it about a uh, friction uh, to motivate me to create more such interesting videos do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video i will see you in the next one thanks for watching